You're listening to. 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 Conversations with Amber the Bear Girl. You're amazing. Amber, love you. You're the best. Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is an actress, a voice actress. She is best known for being the voice of Doraemon in the Doraemon uh, anime you might have seen in our recent years. Um, Jun Sakurada in Rose and Maiden, by the way, if I do pronounce any names incorrectly, I do greatly apologise. It's not really my stress, it's not really my strong point. Um, she voiced Izzy in Digimon. Moki Fraggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Moki Fraggle in Fraggle Rock, the animated series. Uh, Sheila Broflowski in South Park and a few other female characters. Vina in G.I. Joe. Tracy Milbanks in James Bond Jr. Red Butler, Patty Green and Canary Yellow in Rainbow Bright. Weepy Smurf in The Smurfs. Aaron, Louisa and Hassan in three separate episodes of Transformers. Well, who is my guest? My guest is... It's Mona Marshall! Hello. Oh, thank you. It's so nice Welcome. to be here. I know. Oh my since gosh. I finally did get here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to start off by saying I love, I love your background. Like I see a lamb chop puppet. Now I'm gonna say you now. Oh, this. Yes. Yes. Um. There's actually actually a story uh, behind this little. I'm interested. Little I'm actually um, sitting down interested. One of my dearest friends, um, Marsha Lewis, her husband, um. Andy Lewis, who is now retired, but was a um, was Sherry Lewis's dentist. Wow! And uh, when Sherry Lewis passed, he was invited to the memorial, and each person who came was given a lamb chop, and she oh, she asked if she could have an extra one for me. So oh. it's an honored honored oh, place is, right there. That is. And what's interesting is I had auditioned for a show that Sherry was trying to do. Oh, many, many years ago, um, it was going to be a musical thing. Wow. And um, for some reason, the show fell through, but I, I went to her house and I had to sing and it was a lot of fun. And I so did hand funny. puppets for years um, with the LA Moving Band and Puppet Company. It's that wonderful. Is yeah, we so toured throughout Los Angeles. See that beautiful little bird right there? Yeah. That is yeah. Um, Frida Finkelstein. And mm -hmm. she made her debut at City Hall. Mm -hmm. I made her, and I will never make another puppet again. <laughs> mm. Wow, well, that's such a beautiful story, though. Now I gotta say, because my elder sister, who's about oh my gosh, like thirteen years older than me, and I'm nineteen for crying out loud. Oh my goodness! Uh, who who would have thought? Um, so she um, my, she spent most of her childhood years. She spent most of her childhood years in uh, Berlin. And they had the uh, like a sort of like a uh, British armed forces because my dad was in the armed forces. Uh, they had like an armed forces television station there, and it aired like all these English kids programs, some syndicated from America, like Barney and Friends and everything like that. But oh, wow. there was one show that was my sister's absolute favorite, and there's literally photos in our family album of like, like you know, like a you know, like a party kit where it's like the placemats and the paper plates and stuff like that, like oh, a wow. party. She absolutely loved Lamb Chops Play Along. It was her favorite show, watching it oh. growing up in Berlin, and I was like, oh. Sherry Lewis used to. I'm sure you can find this on YouTube. Used to do, uh, what is it? The what is the uh, the the minutes the minute song? It takes a minute. It's very fast, and she used oh, yeah. to do that. Da, 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 da. Anyway, she used to do that lightning fast, and never. I mean. You, she had such control. You never once really looked at her. You just looked at Lamb Chop. Now, when I do, come here, both all of you, my darling. Oh my gosh! This is so I exciting. read the kids. I read the kids on Zoom every Saturday. I didn't realize you were a puppeteer. Oh yeah! Hi there. Whoa! Wow! It's Mina. This is Amber. Oh, oh my! How are you doing, Amber? What's up? You sound remarkably the sky, the ceiling. Like, Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> you said what's up? The sky. <laughs> I know, and and you know he takes everything literally. Yes, I do. The sky is up, and down is the ground. ground. <laughs> okay, Bartholomew, you. It's time for a nap. A nap? I just had a nap. No, I don't. I'm not a ventriloquist. 
Sherry Lewis was, and you never saw her mouth move. She was wow. freaking amazing. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. What a great way to start off this little chat. Well, I don't really like to call it an interview. I like to call it a casual conversation because- every It's a casual talk, conversation. Yeah, yes, in do. conversation with ATF. I was going to say, because like every single person who talks to me, they're like, I prefer chatting with you nice and relaxed more than mainstream media who just fire question after question after question after question. It's just like a back and forth discussion and stuff like Amber, that. Amber, you do I, know that you talk faster than the speed of light. You're like Trey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ray also speaks extremely fast. Oh, Ray. Oh, my gosh. I'd love to run into you with him in that case. He does talk quite fast. Oh, I'm like, sure that you are one of many, but I don't know. I don't yeah. I mean, I begin to know yeah. how to. You'd have to yeah. contact oh, whoever okay. their publicist is, I guess. Most likely, yeah. I know. I didn't need to be with John Rashid, who was the Guinness World Record. He also worked on Transformers, who was like the world record holder for the fastest speaker. And I was like, Oh my gosh, oh, this guy's literally, I'm literally on par with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty fast, my dear, pretty fast. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, So let's talk about some of your costume work. Now, of course, I've got to bring up Transformers. Now, we were just talking before about uh, Peter Cullen and Frank Welker because you were in, you were in a good few episodes. You were in Fire, of, Fire on the Mountain, Aerial Assault and Child's Play. And Child's Play being one of my favourite episodes because they go to like a planet with an alien on it and then like the Transformers are really tiny and then he's got like a cat and he's got like a hamster and he's <laughs> it's such a fun episode. It's, what amazes me is that you remember them. It's been <laughs> years since I've seen them, but sounds good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was uh, that was back when Wally Burr was alive and and um, directing. Yeah, wasn't he, wasn't he like known for his like really long directing sessions? Well, um, let me put it to you this way: there were two directors um, who were known for that. He was one of them. And when mm -hmm. SAG changed uh, changed the rules to you could have an actor for a certain price for eight hours to four hours they were two of the main reasons that you did that ah i see wow that's yeah. really cool yeah um listen they they got a lot of good performances but sometimes what i've learned is is being a, a writer and sometimes um a story editor on uh animation projects is that you have to allow the actor to bring something too. And if you already have such a set idea of how a line should be done, mm -hmm. that sometimes that it, it loses its meaning. Yeah. So a lot of times you, you have to allow that space. Well, most of the time you have to allow that space unless you're working with kids and this and ADR work or, or looping work, because sometimes you just, there's not that kind of room, but you know, we're actors. You yeah. Know, I have, equivalent of, of an MFA in, in um, theater arts and you know <laughs> you gotta trust somewhere otherwise yeah with people as well <laughs> so uh, um yeah yeah I'd like to show you a little something now obviously I'm not going to share too much or I won't even share the sound because I know yeah. Hasbro will dunk on me for sharing this most likely um but i've got the episode up uh, we're not gonna watch all of it i know we don't have time um, thank you i mean we i mean we could but I, I, i'd rather no, talk about like, every aspect of your career and plus there's a quite a memorable moment i'd like you to see now there's a very infamous animation error that lies in this episode and it's around this mark here oh an error oh dear and i've just remembered i've just forgotten to share the sound <laughs> I always make that mistake. I just, I'm like, oh, did I speak it? Uh, right, okay. Watch this. Look at the animation. <laughs> <laughs> the cells were did layered you wrong. something? <laughs> the oh, cells were layered, they layered wrong. That's why they were, you know, like half on, half off. Hence, like, Nitro, he should have been like that. That is so weird. Like, it, if you just look at them, look how, look how like, Optimus, he's just... He's, it was layered wrong you know then they have layers and someone yeah. was to put them on the wrong layers or it happens i know it's so 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 wacky though this episode i mean like there's Aaron, and you know i might as well play a little bit of it but just to remind you that was very very bad that was very very bad and that's a chris latter who voiced Scar starscream 
You saved my building set. Thank you. I find it weird how like I can name everyone's voice actors. Um, so that was uh Walker Edmondson, Peter Cullen, Paul Iding, Dan Gilverzan, and I think Smokescreen was Jack Angel, I think. Probably. Yeah, but, but that's such a good episode, and I know Jack like was, oh, Jack was so wonderful. I know he left us not long ago, actually. It was only about two years ago. Two years ago yeah. this year. Oh my god. Married to my agent. I know. Oh I've yeah, because that's yes. how I got. That's how I got to Arlene because I oh. left the agency I was with. I wanted to leave the agency I was with, which shall not mm -hmm. be mentioned. Um, and I knew Jack, yeah. and so uh, and Arlene had just started her own agency. And, oh, uh, I asked Jack. He said, "Yeah, I'd call her and you know and talk to her. I just done a new tape, and and uh, she said, yeah. So mm -hmm. I love yeah. her. She, she's been my agent since the early nineties. Maybe nine. Wow, that is so cool! Wow, oh, I love that agency. It, part of part of the reason I love it is because it's it's small enough where there's an intimacy there that you don't necessarily find in some of the bigger agencies. Um, there's a lot of care, and um, you know, I've been doing South Park since two thousand, and when we were doing it Tuesday nights late where we'd have to go down to marina del rey tuesday night and the air date was the next day mm -hmm. um you know a lot of agents would grumble about that or would give mark um who's now a producer and also yeah. my partner on humanity harbor um yeah. a lot of grief about that well you, you know this is what you signed on for and he yeah. said Arlene and and uh, the agency never gave him a hard have, have never given him a hard time and he really enjoys you know, talking to them. So wow. that's a, it's a big deal. That's so cool. They're always under so much pressure, even now. Um, even though we record out of our homes, it's still, you know, trying yeah. to be as, as possible. And when they're ready to go, you need to be ready to go. Yeah. So. Well, it kind of cut out there. It was trying, you said like trying to be as, what was possible? Timely as possible. Timely, all right. Kind of cut out. It seems known for doing that. <laughs> um, Wait a minute, you're like nine it. hours different, aren't you? So if eight. it's eight, yep. Okay. So I it's a friend, a friend in twenty-five France. past nine. eleven at night here. Test your bedtime, young lady. Oh no, 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 no! I'm a night owl. I don't go to bed. Your until your answer before. is I'm nineteen. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 19. It is not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm i known for. I've uh, just put my phone on the camera. I've completely lost whatever you said as you bent over. I, I've got a, I'm painting a canvas at the moment. Uh, I've just knocked it over by accident. Yeah, I. I oh, I thought, I thought your microphone had gone, man, when you were just. <laughs> I was like, hang on. You, you... <laughs> no, here, I'll show you some of my artwork. Let's have a look. The one behind oh, me. That is so cool. Let's see if I can do the ones on the wall. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh Some my gosh. Yo, that is so Some of them cool. are erotic, but I have all kinds of stuff. And here's... Where's my little... It's so <laughs> cool. Here's a little wire sculpture of that. Oh, wow. So that was like... Was that like a 3D pen thing that you made with that? No, 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 no. This is wire oh did. oh okay with oh my, my very little hands oh that is so cool i love oh dragons I, I i just I love, love voice actors who have like another hobby outside doing of the most one of the voices i love doing the most is for a game dragon guard ah. to play a dragon. Oh, that's with an so english cool. accent i might add really can i hear it if that's okay with you oh yes well there's something to be said for that isn't there if you want to speak like an English person, it's important that you watch as much Acorn TV as possible. Oh my gosh. Wow. I've heard it's like rude to ask people to do voices like on interviews and stuff like that. But like, oh my God, honey, you couldn't stop me from doing voices. That's, I don't know. That's, they well, just come. Say the best they thing come. To like, I'm not sure. I was lucky to find a place where they could actually earn a living. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm. I mean, so when I'm with friends and I feel comfortable, voices just come, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's part so, of the um, way you're wired. Yeah. Or I'm wired. I don't know about mm -hmm. you.
<laughs> um, years though. So going back to that clip uh, of Transformers, I've just realized, like, you know, when like sound waves kind of like running from the cat, and then like his little ravage, uh, sound waves little cassette ravage goes in the the hamster cage with a uh, booper. That's his name, and they're on the wheel. Well, Booper, Ravage, Soundwave, and um, Nitro have um, something in common. (laughs) (laughs) Frank voices all four of them. Oh, my God. That's what's so much fun is when you do multiple voices. I I know. Can can you remember the recording sessions for Transformers at all? I'll tell you what I remember about the the, really about them, besides Wally over-directing. God bless him. Um, is I always felt like the new kid on the block because I was, and that was back when you um, you didn't have even a pager, and so I was working with some. This was on that and GI Joe, because um, I remember B- Wally's old studio on Ventura Boulevard, and uh, you know they they would all have messages from their agents waiting <laughs> waiting for them, and I thought to myself, oh, someday I want that to happen. <laughs> of course, it did. Thank God, but um. <laughs> You know, honestly, and this is even true of doing a, you know, background for for movies. I try to stay in the moment of what's going on. Some actors don't do that and it's fine, but I like to be part of what's going on. So, and I think that came out of the fact that when I started, I was working with a lot of heavyweight people in terms of people who've been doing voices for a long time. Um, Doyce, <laughs> Doyce, Doss had mentioned them, and so when I finally got to work like with Joni Gerber and um, June Ferre, it was like, <gasps> oh my god! Well, what did you work with them on? Uh, Joni, I worked with uh, on uh, a commercial and then um, Smurfs, but in uh, CBS Story Break, Mama Don't Allow, I was uh, June Ferre's son. Wow. I don't have no music playing around here. Oh, that is so cool. I don't have no music playing around here. I love doing Sibia Story Break. They were oh, good yeah. stories, great characters. I worked with well, I worked with Frank on some of those too. Oh. And I also discovered a mouse voice. Oh, so oh me. That sounds like a voice Frank would do, and that's a compliment that is. Nice. It is, but he wasn't the one doing it. Um, oh. Lenny Weintraub, Lenny Weintraub, I think, who's since passed. He was on that. We were just noodling around, you know, in between takes, we would noodle around. Oh, yeah. that sounds like fun. And because so. I remember when I first reached out to you all those years ago about uh, June's uh, friend, co worker, Bill Scott, if you had worked with him by any chance. Oh, did I tell you I used to bring him cookies so he would hire me? <laughs> Wait, you what? Wait, I don't. Did you? Did you? you, Did you actually meet Bill Scott? Yeah, I think it was Bill Scott I met. Yeah, at Old Hanna Barbera. Hmm. I don't think you did anywhere. Let's look it up. Come on, let's look it up. Oh my gosh! Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, I can only name one Hanna Barbera project that he did, and that was the Velveteen Rabbit. Smurfs was Hanna Barbera. I don't think he did Smurfs. Well, let's see what he did do, because maybe I have Bill Scott mixed up with somebody else. It could happen. Mm. There is credits. There is credits. There is credits. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's see who's in the credits. Oh, my gosh. This is the moment of truth. If if, if I can read, that is, because it's quite very fuzzy. Uh, who is it? Uh, oh, would you look at that? There's no voice actors. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Um, who is that? Who can I recognize? Peter Cullen, Brian Cummings, Linda Gary, Marin Lightstone, Bill Scott, Hal Smith, and Frank Welker. Yeah, I think Gordon Hunt. Uh, oh, the puppet. No, he's a stuffed animal. Oh, oh, right, yeah, Twist. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, and the artful uh... Dodger was Barbara Goodson. We had a lot oh, of. Oh, wasn't it a s- 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 Saban? Saban. Yeah, God, Saban. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, because I I remember now because I think someone spoke to me about that. I can't. Uh, uh, I'm gone. I'm and we also did uh, the Yearling together. 
Let's have a look. Uh, 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 oh, 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 I think, I think, uh, right, 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 right. Okay, don't quote me on this. But was Mark Hamill in an episode of, of... Oliver Twist? Oh, I wouldn't think so. Because, because... all right, I was going to say. already a big star by then. Because Tony Pope's daughter, um, yeah. uh, Mar- 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 Marcella Lentz yeah. Pope, she has a picture of her and Mark Hamill taken at a, at a studio in um she said it was in the, the mid 90s and she said it might have been for when her dad was working on Oliver Twist. So yeah, but um, Mark might have been working on something else. Maybe, maybe. Because Saban was also doing films at that well, he still is, I guess. I don't know what he's doing now. Tony Pope was great. He was in Dawson's class too. I know, yeah, bless him. Great oh, yeah. class. Yeah, he did a lot of um, he did a lot of anime and like I think he, he did a lot of uh, he did he did Transformers as well. He was Retgar and the uh, well, Tony Pope did everything. He was yeah brilliant. Awesome. Yeah, in 1999 we lost we lost him, and we lost um, Mary Kay. Oh yeah, Mary Kay, bless her. Yeah. And then a couple three years ago we lost Rusi. Oh yeah, Ruth Taylor. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Oh bless her heart. We did a whole bunch of family theater stuff together late. Did ya? Neil oh, Neil wow. Ross, me, Rusi. I can't remember if there was anybody else, but they had Universal had some kind of deal where they got these family films that were uh in different languages, and then we did multiple voices. Uh but we worked late at night for some strange freaking reason. And it was a lot of fun and Rusi, who who could speak so many languages I remember, really yeah we were listening to something that was done and and one of the characters was speaking plattdeutsch and it was disturbing Rusi because her concentration because she she could understand it but what was uh, what was on the script was not accurate it was driving her crazy was, was yeah. mad. we did a lot oh. of uh when she did mother goose i worked for her and um Ken Forsey. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. A whole lot of stuff. A whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Bless a lot of fun times. It's been a fun career. Oh, yeah. I bet it has been. Oh. So, Mona, I'd like to talk to you about, of course, South Park. Of course, you voiced <laughs> Sheila Brofloski. And we were just talking about Mary Kay Bergman, weren't we? Yeah. Oh, she was. She was the best. She had a great heart, and wonderful talent. It's hard to believe she's gone. And that's now over 20. 20 yeah. Oh my and God. loved still at South Park. Yeah, definitely. Can I talk about that sometimes? Because yeah. he's been there a year longer than I have. I'm talking about Mark Munley. Great ah, guy. Right. Yeah. And very funny. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like? Kind of like doing her characters were you asked to do a direct impression or were you just um, i will tell them? you when yeah i mean some of them you know i mean butter's mom was not real prominent and i've done characters since that she never did but um mary Kay and i had done a benefit in august our husband sat together and she Dino. was you know i'm sorry her husband Dino Andrade. Yes. Yeah, and he's, he's great. Uh, our yeah. husband sat together, and everything was going really well. And and um, it's really funny because Mary Kay said to me, "Hey Mo, you should uh, you should encourage your agent to." I guess she had gotten a spokesperson for something, and she kept saying, "Oh, you know, you'd be really good doing this." Look at my hair. Uh, just I could tell I was running late, right? Just, hmm. <laughs> no right. lipstick. No. Anyway, she said um, she, she was very encouraging. And uh, there's another story about her involving a gift that I did that later, years and years and years later, became uh, the basis for Humanity Harbor. But um, uh, but she had been very encouraging, and 
and um, she had she had called to ask me some questions without revealing what she was uh, what she was about to do, which was South Park, and I was able to help her with that. And so here we were at this benefit. This is August 1999, and yeah, she had been very encouraging. Now, about five years, no, about three years after that, I ended up doing the price points for um, and the tag announces for Publix. So I was like, you could do this. So she was very, very encouraging. So, okay, so fast forward to 2000, she dies in 99 in November, which was a horrible shock to our industry. Yeah. I mean, she was also the voice of Snow White at that time. Oh yeah, she was, yeah. Well, she she yeah. was due to do a session the next day. And once again, and no, you would never have guessed um, yeah, first of all, I'm pretty sure that she had, she was probably suffering from depression. I mean, that's what apparently she was, that's, you that's, know, so, mental health issues. but you know, you can't really say to people, oh, I feel really blue and they'll go to, you know, especially in our business, say, well, look at you got all this work and you're married. And I mean, just people do not understand depression. Yeah. So, uh, so there was that, but anyway, so we got the call from our agents that, you know, South Park had to get these shows finished and um so i would have to listen to them the two voices well at that time there was like four voices i was working or three voices over and over and over again and the only thing that kept me focused on doing that was her saying to me if she <laughs> is her saying to me because she couldn't do the voices it's okay mo it's okay. You know, I can't do this. You can go ahead. That is what kept me going because it was horrible. I would cry as I was listening to her. Nobody wants to take over somebody's part because they've died or because they're asking for more, more money. Cause years ago I was asked to do that with, um, with a very prominent show. And when I found out, I asked my agent, why do they want to replace these people? And she said, because they want more money. I said, no, I'm not doing that to a fellow actor. Um, so good on you. So, um, mm -hmm. so that gave me, um, the courage to do it. And then when I, when I did Broflowski, it was great because I had also been doing, not that they're exactly alive, but the rhythm is, uh, Joan Rivers. I used to do Joan Rivers at conventions. Oh, well, oh wake up and smell the decaf. What are you doing? Um, so so anyway um what 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 i had no idea chicken pox was such a dangerous illness <laughs> oh my gosh it's just like listening to those oh, i'm gonna have to put this she was a lot of fun to do and I, oh, the first I, couple years were really difficult mary Kay, i'm terrible at remembering anybody's birthday except maybe my husband's and i always forget about mine so and, and um, the woman is like my adopted mom i remember her birthday because it's 11 11 but uh, Mary Kay used to find out everybody's birthday and she would bring them and she would send them or give them a card. Oh. I mean, she is till this day remembered and beloved by the people who are, who knew her when she was working at South Park. So those first couple of years, it was really rough. You know, you're, I mean, first of all, you're walking to somebody else's part. And then the second thing is, and not that I mean, people were very kind and very generous, but I started going to South Park early so I could get to know everybody and yeah. say hello. And then I started bringing uh, goodies to them, which was fun. I love oh, to do that. That's so sweet of you. Oh, yeah. it's, it's not, you know, they, I mean, they had all kinds of food brought in, but sometimes it's nice to have something homemade. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I think homemade's probably better than store bought, if I'm doing And I usually do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I have created a recipe now that's vegan. It's made Ooh. with oatmeal, bananas, uh -huh. oatmeal, bananas, and chopped, slightly cooked apples. Oh, what recipe is it? Mine. Ooh. Oatmeal drops. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, my oh, orthopedist my uh, loves them. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. You have, to, you have to save me some when I come over. I'm coming over. Come on day. over, girl. Come on. Exciting, honestly. Take you to base camp uh, right around the corner where you can uh, sit and watch horses and oh, have good food. 
my not to be fair that sounds so good oh my god i'm so excited for this trip um to uh california next year like just oh my gosh it's like seeing everyone is just gonna let be me know so magical i will I'll buy do a, i'll buy a good breakfast at base camp you're gonna have to get up early though <gasps> oh yeah in definitely. burbank i'll become, I'll become I a live morning in, person i live in glendale near burbank mona i'd like to okay this is a good one to bring up right okay um james bond jr i love that show it was a great show i know like i just watch it on youtube and you think wow because it was made by uh fred wolf films um who who were quite big so they did the original teenage Mutant ninja turtles and they had like a, a dublin subsidiary they did a few shows for the uk market so that's what i was basically raised on and like that that show had like a really good cast uh, cory burton jeff bennett susan silo julian holloway oh my gosh god i love julian he was just such a trip <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Wait, I had somebody else on that show who's now a big Broadway star. Who is it? Well, go look up the cast. Let's have a look. Oh my god. Yeah, I had the opportunity to meet a um brilliant actor. I had I had an opportunity to meet Julian at a convention, but um well I you know his I dad was in uh, his dad was a major actor who was uh, did the part of um uh, Eliza Doolittle's uh, dad in, uh, in yeah uh, oh and he's married to um Roald Dahl's daughter um Julian is yeah yeah, yeah. uh oh, Brian Stokes Mitchell yeah he was wow. great I love every time he comes on television doing something I just love the fact that he did James Bond Jr he was Stop great that cast was really first of all they were lovely to be with it's also Look the last time Wrigley um God, uh, what was his first name? Bob R Bob Ridgely. When the last thing Bob Ridgely did, and you, you know who Bob Ridgely was or is? The name sounds familiar. He was outrageous and a brilliant actor. <laughs> he was also in Beverly Hills Cop, I think. Oh, all right. Three. But it was one of the last things he did, and he was just outrageous. He would do. The, totally wacko things and because of who he was and, and the way he did it he could get away with it oh, that's so I, cool. I loved working with him he was just a hoot wow oh my outstanding God. it was outstanding um, but I, I loved doing james bond jr and of course i loved Corey. i've known i had known Corey since uh, dawes's days when he was oh, a little yeah, cause girl doing voices you studied under dawes butler didn't you wow yeah, he was brilliant yeah. brilliant Oh my gosh, yeah, Corey, I was going to ask what was it like working with him. I mean, God, Brian Cummings, Corey, and I also did a Halloween album back when there were albums. What? Uh, it was really fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is actually quite cool. My very first uh, after gig was uh, something that Dawes directed. I'm, I'm really? a big Sherlock Holmes fan. Oh, yeah. Big Sherlock Holmes fan. And, oh my um, gosh. It was a speckled band. I was playing a Scottish maid. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the same time I was doing improv. And Robin Williams was doing Mork and Mindy. And he came back to visit our improv class because he had been in Off the Wall. And so I was new to the advanced class. That, they had a lot of writers in there. And I was, so Robin went up first and I was really nervous about I really didn't want to be in a scene with him and the and so the premise was one of you is a professional and the other one has a problem so i had just finished reading the annotated version of um sherlock holmes that had been given yeah. to me by um the producer of spiral zone which was one of my first um one of my first 65 episode series thing where I got to play two really great voices and one a villain and one a heroine, heroine. So uh, anyway, so, so, um, so I digress. What, what was I? <laughs> That's what happens when you talk about yourself. See, you get caught up in all. It's in conversation with ATF. We go off topic. So, so I have no idea what I was <laughs> talking about. What about James Bond Jr. I think. James Bond Jr originally no no yeah Robert, Robert tell you that, that the, the producer on that was um Bill Hutton and I later ended up writing uh songs for mm -hmm. story editing and doing some of the oh gosh two or three major characters on the chuckle with gritters 
which ran throughout every country except oh. the United States, except for specials. Wow. So that was kind wow. of fun. It got got me more into writing and as well as uh, voiceover work. So that was plus. I still get occasional residuals for not residuals um, money for the for the songs I wrote with my then partner. It was a lot of fun. Wow. Our job was to make sure that the song tied in the educational aspect. Ah, that was a lot of fun. Wow, that was really cool. And um, another show that you did, actually, was Rainbow Bright um, with Betty in a Bush and Peter Cullen, of course. What was it like to do that? Because you voiced a few characters in that. I voiced uh, Red Butler, who talked like this. I did, um, let me see. Patio Green. Patio Green was like this. She was really excited and happy. And Canary uh, Yellow. Yellow. Well, that's a really good thing to do, don't you think? <laughs> I literally have a DVD uh, in my uh, DVD cupboard of Rainbow Bright. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a, it's such like, it's such a good show. Like, I'm literally like, I mean, yeah, because oh my gosh, yeah, because the Pat Fraley was in it as well as uh, oh, yeah. he was, he was yeah. uh, Loki. That was a that was a fun show. Um, the pilot, uh, doing the pilot was not real fun. That was back in the day when um, Wally Burr directed it, and he oh, got yeah. into an argument with um, the producer. There were real kids on it, oh. real kids on that first show, and um, it just ran all day long. And Hallmark was there, so everybody had something to say. Hallmark was there. Um, Oh God, who was the toy company? Mattel was there. Yeah. And it, nobody could decide on anything. And I thought I had lost the gig until I saw the movie and realized, wait a minute, those are my voices. So what's going on? That was yeah. it. It was kind of it was kind of difficult listening to, mm. to the argument with one of them on the phone and one of them live. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, because there, there was there was a film. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was like I think Scott Menville was in the TV show. Jonathan oh, yeah. Harris was that in it. Such a sweetheart. I love Scott. I he used to run. Has, in... oh, I was gonna say he has the same birthday as me, February twelfth. So does Tara Strong, February twelfth. I know it's a common practice, but you know what was a common practice? Having babies on that day. Ooh. probably i don't know there you, go. <laughs> you got to go back nine months and find out what was really going on what oh yeah oh yeah well what was what was what was really happening in madeira that day mm. <laughs> inside joke no one will get it um <laughs> um so yeah um rainbow bright and the star stealer uh you did that film as well and uh, ha- actually i've got to ask have you seen any of your Rainbow Bright co-stars since the show ended, so like maybe Pat Fraley or Peter Cullen sure. or Bettina Book. Really? I mean, I haven't seen him for a while. Um, but yeah, Pat, I used to see Pat doing background voices for films. <gasps> oh, yeah. Bettina, I'm not... Background voice. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. I had a lot oh, of fun what? doing... Um, like ADR. Yeah. ADR had a lot of fun doing... Um, uh, monsters university because i got to do a character that was in two of the trailers really oh my gosh yeah because you you did a, you've done a lot of pixar films eighty off pixar films which ones have you done well monsters inc <laughs> monsters university i don't know who Look were you up. in monsters inc oh yeah who who were you it's background different characters but in monsters university stuff. she has a name or he has a name whatever it is and it was like Oh, this is the greatest thing. Come on, this is a scaring school. That was a lot of fun. <gasps> oh, I think I know who you're on about. One of the um Yeah, she's green. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to you can look uh, her up somewhere. I'm having I'm having I'm having a look. Um oh right, okay. I'm trying to think. Uh oh right, okay. It says um oh my gosh. Um Brownlee says you were a character called Emmett. He was a little green monster with like large glasses. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, because I remember his line. He's like, Mrs. Graves, wipe the went over the line. <laughs> I remember That's now. Great. Oh my oh my god. Oh wow. It says you voiced uh, Jordan's disgust uh, emotion in Riley's first yes. date. Oh my gosh, you went 
inside out as well wow i love doing inside out that was such a brilliant, such brilliant a concept. i saw it in cinemas mm. when it first came out um when we did it they told us we could not discuss it but i i came home well i came home that day and i said i to my husband i just finished doing one of the most remarkable films it was so creative i can't tell you anything about it but but it certainly was a, a highlight i mean what he did is basically based on uh, his daughter you know yeah what and, if feelings had feelings <laughs> oh yeah I, it was just a brilliant concept Absolutely yeah definitely brilliant. my breathtaking mind-blowing you know have you um Mona, have you got any uh, kids of your own, if, uh, if you don't mind me asking? No, I do not. That's probably why I love children so much, because oh. I've never had any. <laughs> never just no, I, I created a program called Mind Magic in the mid-90s as a volunteer for a school here, McKinley Elementary School. Ah. And, um, it was to help children create imagery for what they read. Wow, that's so cool. If you can visualize, it really helps you retain. And of course, in voiceover that's exactly what you're doing yeah yeah of course well i'm Absolutely. not trusting yeah, so the computer but... somebody in our so i used to use um beanie babies yeah with the kids that they would um they would um do certain things i wrote a grammar rap about the eight parts of speech and so if they could do, memorize that at the end of the year this was part of their curriculum then um yeah. uh, if they could write a story about the beanie baby yeah. and how they use the eight parts of speech they mm -hmm. would go from temporarily having the beanie baby to it becoming part of their life and ah. it, was, it was really a rewarding time i did that for about 15 years wow as a volunteer here in burbank at mckinley elementary school for mrs westcott who then went to teach at middle school so wow. about that time you know things were really really busy so oh my gosh the time wow. to so, but I missed reading to kids. Yeah. So now um, I do read to them uh, at Discon. So I might start reading to them. At, um, oh yeah, you did say every Saturday you read to them, didn't you? Before? And Saturday I read online. So it's going to oh, be a chance right, okay. to get to know my cousins in Philadelphia. Two oh, that's so boys, cool. Two friends. So yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and I really love reading to kids. Oh. And then we talk, you know, and then I have them make up stories, and they all know Bartholomew the Crow, and. Oh, oh, bless you. Oh, that is, man, I wish I could sit in one, one of those and just be like, oh, darling, oh, yeah. you're welcome oh. to come. I'll send you the link. Honestly, like, oh, we have, have to, to participate. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to be like a student. I'm like, miss, miss, I'm right here, miss. So do, do they call you Marsha or Mi Ma I said Marsha instead of Mona. Oh, I'm don't so worry. Sorry. My agent does the same thing. So. It's midnight. Look, <laughs> I'm still losing. Um, well, does it call you Mrs. Marshall? Ms. Mona? How do you no, no. It? It's called the Mind Magic Show with Ms. Mo. They call Ms. Mo. Mo. Ah, right. Mommy, Mona. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Wow. It's a great life. Ooh, oh my gosh like i wish this growing thing. up i wish i had something like this to be fair and this is what i say about anything these days like if it's just representation like in a kids show or if it's like something really fun i just say i wish i had this growing up that's well, that's what i mainly say now of course a lot of people remember <laughs> dg mom the movie so tell me what was it like uh, like like doing that really or like the digimon series oh, i love doing it i love doing izzy for one thing and i'm the one that came up with the word prodigious Oh, really? Yeah. We had done our first episode and, um, you know, he's a, com he's a computer wizard, right? And um, so, um, so they were, so our producer at the time was trying to, she said he needs to have a, you know, a catchphrase or a word. So that mm, weekend, it was a Friday, that weekend we went, Sal and I rented um, October Sky. Do you know the film? Okay, Ooh, so the name it's sounds about, familiar. It's based on a true story um, about these kids um, living in a coal mining town, and they decided that they would create their very own rocket. It was right when Sputnik was out there, and we were in the space program really heavily, and, and yeah. so um, not the lead, because I think Gyllenhaal was the lead. Um, uh, uh, this kind of the nerdier looking boy who had red hair and glasses, uh, not unlike not unlike Izzy, um, except without the glasses. Um, 
when the rocket goes off, he mispronounces prodigious and says, prodigious. And I came back to the next session and said, I got the word. It's perfect for him. Prodigious. Which means awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the computer wizard who's got a great brain. It was perfect. So with that, uh, our interview has suddenly come to an end, but maybe in the future we could do a part two, maybe. I don't know. That Who would knows? be fine, because I, um, I know I really kind of screwed up your day to day. I am no, so it's okay. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay, Mona. You're fine. You're fine, honestly. Actually, I've got to ask, where can my viewers find you on the internet? Have you got a social media? Is there anything you would like oh, to yeah. If you if you go in... Uh, when I started... Uh, creating um, my adult animation show, which at that time was called The Adventures of Puss and Dick, A Survivor's Guide to Relationships, and is now Humanity Harbor. I hired um, someone to help me with social media. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I wanted to do is be able to give back something, because I do teach on yeah. Zoom, I do voice production, but I wanted to do something that would be fun and free to help people with their voice, whether they were serious about being a voiceover professional or whatever. Um, and a lot of this was based on what I learned years ago in a theater class um, called Voice Production at LACC, where Mark Hamill went to school. Oh. And, uh, also. and so I started doing voices for fun. So you I'm can so see me there. And you and my website is um, themonamarshall.com. Sweet. Wow. I'll get those um, in the description. And well, with that. Oh, and you also can see uh, my wire sculptures, some of which are jewelry. Oh, oh yeah, that's the dragon you showed me before, wasn't it? I, I have pendants and earrings too. Oh, that is so cool. Oh my gosh, wow. With that being said, Mona, thank you so much for appearing on my podcast. It's been so lovely to talk to you. And honestly, don't apologize mm -hmm. about having to delay it. It was worth the wait. Honestly, tell me. Tell me. Amber, where, where are you from exactly? Where, I'm from Chester. From? I'm from Chester in North England. Chester in North England. Yeah, well, Northwest. What, is <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Seriously, I watch a lot of Acorn. I now, I now have... Uh, it, into my first of all a good friend of mine who's now in france came from england mm -hmm. uh, uh tamora who was an incredible opera opera singer yeah lovely woman uh but um what is it um oh uh well done you which is not an expression you would find in america but it's like well done you well done you there. well done you <laughs> well done you absolutely why not to your home. Thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF. <laughs> stay safe, stay happy, and me and Mona will see you around. All right, take care, everybody. Bye. 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 Hot.